I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one year old, low mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them or see them on our website, bobweberautomart.com, we could save you between five and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase. Welcome into another edition of Sports Junkies. I'm Steve Sparky Pfeiffer from the Wendy's Big Show on Sports Radio 1250 WSSP. He is Greg Geeson of the Racine Journal Times. Time to talk a little Brewers baseball with you here uh, as we get ready uh, to go into the opening weekend of the season. First series complete, Brewers and the Braves. Brewers lose two out of three. Offense uh, seems to be an issue early on. Generally, pitching's ahead of offense right. at the beginning of the yep. year anyway. The takeaway from it, I thought, was that you were dead on. That pitching looked really good. So far. Now, if they continue to have, knock on wood, any, anything like that, yep. you're fine. The hitting will come. That, that's never really been a problem with this team. This is my issue. It was my issue at the beginning of the year, and it's still going to be my issue. Carlos Gomez in that leadoff spot just cannot be there. I, I don't know how long they're going to give him. I don't like it. And you go right back. Now, sure, he has the home run. He's had a couple of walks, which is good for the on-base percentage, something I'm sure he's working on. But you can't be making dumb base running errors in front of your two, three, and four hitters. If Gomez is batting sixth, Fine, because it's 7, 8, and 9. Go ahead, be overly aggressive, do what you need to do. Because if it works, it's a sack fly, it scores, I got you. I do not like him up there because of that reason. We talked, when Jarvis Brown and I were doing this all the last two years, we've had one simple thought about Carlos Gomez. And he, he proved us wrong. He had a great year yeah, last he year. Did. I'm, I'm not going to dispute that. The second half, he tailed a little bit. That's okay. Right. I mean, the amazing first half. But, and we both ate crow on this, but when we looked at it, we both were in agreement. He was not your leadoff hitter. And your leadoff hitter, and when Jarvis was playing, he was one, Correct. was that you want to get the ball down, you want to use your speed to get on base, and you, you want, want to take to pitches. Gas. And yeah. you want to you take, want to take pitches. pitches, you yes. want to be disciplined, you don't want to strike out. His contention was... Last year, he was swinging from his heels. And he's always done that. Okay. And he, he's a guy that wouldn't be bad further down in the lineup because, okay, if he strikes out, he strikes out. And you, you can accept that. But you can't accept that from your leadoff hitter. They tried it in Minnesota, and he got traded. Right. They look at it now, and they've tried it before. It's a scary proposition. I don't like it, but if that's all that they have there. No, but it's not. See, and this is where, I, this is where I'm at. I, I understand the second base thing is a mess because Ricky Weeks is making $11 million a year. That's why it's a mess. If Ricky Weeks is making $2 million a year. Ricky Weeks is not playing. And Ricky Weeks probably isn't even on this team. Scooter Jeanette's playing second base every day. We've moved on. Now, I know there are a lot of people that look at minor league numbers and all that stuff and go, ah, Scooter Jeanette can never, ever be a leadoff hitter. Well, let me see it. I, I'd like to see it proven to me. Because if Gomez is at six, that lineup is much, much better. Scooter is not going to strike out. He's going to put the ball in play. He can move runners over. He can do everything that you want him to do at the top of that lineup. In my opinion, if Scooter Jeanette's that guy, put him at leadoff. And if Ricky has to play one or two days a week, fine. Then he just stays at the leadoff position in front of Segura, Braun, Ramirez, Luke Croy, five, Gomez, six, Chris Davis, seven, whoever's playing first base is eight, which should be Lyle Overbay, because he's a much better contact hitter at this point than Mark Reynolds. Do you just prefer a platoon there than second base? And I prefer no platoon. Lefty-righty, lefty or no. do you want... I don't want any... I am against platoons in general. Greg, I've never liked platoons. I didn't like the platoon last year, especially when it comes to a veteran and a younger player. I think it's very tough for that younger player to figure it out and adapt when he's trying to figure out when he's going to play. You remember, Scooter Jeanette really took off after Ricky Weeks went down, and he didn't have to worry about, okay, am I going to get yanked? Am I going to play tomorrow? I better not strike out a couple times because I may not play, play for a couple of days. I, you just can't have it. Carlos Gomez said it last year. What's the difference, Carlos? Well, I'm not looking over my back anymore. I'm not in a platoon, so I don't got to worry about thinking about it. I know if I go 0 for 4, I'm back in the lineup tomorrow, and I can relax a little bit. And I think the same exact thing applies at second base. Ricky Weeks can be a guy that plays on Sundays when you have those garbage lineups out there. Fine. Outside of that, you can use Ricky Weeks and Mark Reynolds both off the bench for some pop and pinch hit situations to try and get you a home run when you need one or a big RBI hit. Fine. Other than that, neither one of those two, in my opinion, should be in the line. Now, I remember listening to you on the big show when you were talking about 
Ricky is a pinch hitter. Does right. he have the ability? Because I mean, it's a he doesn't have a size. he doesn't have a large sample size as no. a pinch hitter. No, he does not. But neither does Scooter Jeanette. Obviously, Scooter Jeanette hasn't had one no, either. Because so. you, you're developing. You, it's a it's a shoot either way. Right. You, you're just not sure. See, and that's the one thing. You know, would this team have been better off? With a Fontano or a Terrio or one of those old guys, you know, from back in the day, Cardinals Cubs era, those slap hitters, they've been better off just saying, Ricky, we're done. Here's your 11 million, go away, and we're going to go sign this veteran guy to come in here and play the position, and either start or be the backup one way or the other, that has the experience of pinch hitting, that has done it over the course of his career. I, it's a nice thought, but I don't know that you can put the money out. Like, I don't think the well, I'm not the owner. Can waste the money. I agree, but if. if if you're not Milwaukee, if you're Boston, or if you're New York, I don't think he's still there. No, no, definitely not. You move on. Then again, let, let's be honest, the standard for Boston and New York is a lot higher than Absolutely. what the standard is for Milwaukee. Right. You can go out there and say, okay, in Boston, if you're not winning and you're not in the wild card, someone's getting fired, as you saw two years ago. Right. And, I mean, that was a disaster. Yep. Don't get me wrong. But even in New York... If you're not winning and you're not in the playoffs and you don't have a couple of rings already on your hand. Something's changing. Something's going to be changing. Yeah, I agree with you. And that standard is there for the GM and it's there for the manager. So you're going to make those moves. It's not there for the Brewers. The Brewers are looking at it as, okay, we, we want to win. We want to win the division. Sure. But we also want to put a quality product out there and do the best we can with what we have. One other thing, the closer position, obviously we have to bring that up. K-Rod, Jim Henderson, nobody saw Jim Henderson not closing on opening day. K-Rod gets to close. Renicky says afterwards, the Brewers manager, well, we're going to wait for Henderson to get his stuff back. Henderson finally makes an appearance on the ball 95 miles an hour. I think he's got his stuff back based on one batter that he faced. But it, to me, it just doesn't smell right. It smells a little fishy to me uh, that Henderson doesn't have this closing job. And I do not want it to be a closer by committee situation either. That has been disaster every mm -hmm. time it's been tried in Major League Baseball, or most of the times. Not a fan of that either. And I don't know, see, and, and nobody will tell you this now one way or the other. I wonder what the conversation was with K-Rod to get K-Rod to come back for less money. I wonder what that conversation was about. I would love to know, hey, K-Rod, you're going to close for us, but we just we don't really trust Jim. So you're going to be the closer. Henderson will be your eighth inning guy. We're going to wait till the, you know before the season starts to really make it official, but that, that's the deal. You come here and, and you give us some protection. Did that conversation happen? I don't know if it happened. I have no idea. This whole thing just doesn't smell right to me. You know what? It was funny because when you heard the players talking about it, they didn't even know about it. K-Rod said he was told before batting practice on opening day. Ramos Ramirez said yep. in post game, and Braun said, yeah, I was just told before we went out, hey, well, this is what's going on. You know, to give a Henderson some credit, I mean, when the media came up to start talking to him, he stood there with a smile and said, hey, I want what's best for the team. And he said I, the right things, too. He, he's on Chuck and Wicked on our morning show on Tuesdays, and he said the right things. Yeah, I mean, I, and I applaud that. I think he's, they're going about it the proper way. In terms of right. Jim is, but did that conversation? I, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know how many suitors are really out there for K Rod to begin with, because you're sitting right. at the back end of a career. Absolutely. While amazing, you're just not necessarily sure if the arm is there anymore and the ability to get people out on a long term, consistent basis is still there. Well, I, what I liked was Renicky said, you know, we're better off if Henderson's closing, K Rod's in the eighth, and then the seventh is Kinsler and Will Smith sharing the seventh. Yes. Now. If everybody does their job, and your starting pitching does their job, Greg, we can win 90 games. Yeah. And Brewers can win 90 games. If everybody does their job in the in starting pitching and bullpen. And stays healthy. And right, obviously stays healthy. That's good. I like that. And we're on our way. And I'll be right. I'll be right. He's Greg right. Eason of the RC Channel Times. I'm Steve Sparky. Bye for, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Sports Junkies. Talking Brewers baseball.